In this video, we're going to be talking about the periodic table of elements. So basically, the periodic table is just a humongous classification of elements based on how it reacts to the outside environment and also based on the number of valence electrons it has and how reactive it can possess to other kinds of elements and what it typically or what its purpose is in our world. So um, basically, we're going to be just looking at how it classifies and basically the definition of the classification. So first are these are alkali metals. Alkali metals are very reactive because um, in this block group one, basically what that means is that these only have one valence electron. And when it has only one valence electron, it tends to be super reactive and tries to lose that valence electron. These are our alkali, alkali metals. Alkali metals are highly reactive due to their number of electron, the valence electrons they possess, they tend to lose it fast because they only have one valence electron and also because they're part of the metals category. Next are alkaline earth metals. They're also reactive, but not as highly reactive. This is part over here. And you might be wondering why hydrogen isn't colored in. And that's because hydrogen is a gas, not a metal. It's actually a non-metal. And because of that, it, it's just like put there because of the valence electrons, but in reality, it's somewhere over here in this non-metal section. All right, next after that, we're going to be moving to our transition metals. So our transition metals conclude of like all these located over here. It's this humongous like square and or this rectangle. And basically the difference between like these metals and then these like non-metals over here is that transition metals their classification of the valence electrons are a little bit different and they're not as reactive as these metals over here. They're just standard metals that can either gain or lose electrons based on the number of valence electrons it possesses in its natural form. Mainly, you could think of this acting as a bridge between these alkali, or alkaline metals to these non-metals and, and also these transition metals, they typically um, they typically react with these other reactive non-metals and hence they create a lot of these like substances together. Okay, so I'm just gonna like highlight it. Oh, and also there's like lactonides and actinides. I'll get into that part also. So these are the transition metals. So next we're gonna move on to lanthanides and actinides. So uh, lanthanides, which are located in this top part over here, these guys are very like non non radioact radioactive. But the actinides located at the bottom half over here are the ones that are very radioactive. So I'm gonna highlight the lanthanides. These are not not radioact not re radioactive. So this is where the lanthanide uh, section starts. It starts over here, but just to like compress it and make it more simplified, they put it over here at the bottom. Plus, the lanthanides don't exactly like correspond with the rest of the elements in the periodic table, and same can be said with the actinides. These guys fill the f-block elements, and if you don't know what that is, you can visit a previous video. These guys fill the f-block elements, but these guys over here are the d-block elements. And because of that, it's a little bit different, and they can't exactly sort it out, so that's why they're a separate chunk. And uh, actinide starts here, so this element is actually actinide. And uh, this bottom section also is actinide. So now we're going to be going to these unknown metals, so like scientists can't exactly classify these. They just couldn't figure it out, like what these elements do. So basically they categorized as unknown elements. And it's kind of like a work in progress. All right, next one after that, we're going to be moving to post-transition me uh, metals. And these are basically like the next step from moving from metals to metalloids or metals to non-metals. So this includes aluminum all the way to titanium and then over here to bismuth. Next, we're going to be talking about our metalloids. And our metalloids, it's very small. It's probably like the smallest. There's only eight elements. And basically, there's actually an easy mnemonic to memorize them. Boring, silly goats are at the party. So this SB is antimony. So that's why we say at the party instead of something else.
basically when i'm done it, it just looks like a staircase see look the next are reactive non-metals and these reactive non-metals are located over here they react with the transition metals a lot and form like many chemical compounds that we know today they also react with the alkali or alkaline earth metals these are basically just reactive um non-metals and basically they have a lot of valence electrons and they're trying to be stable so they're trying to like pair themselves up with other kinds of elements so that they can create either a covalent or an ionic bond so that they also can end up being a stable uh, atom in the short term these try to gain and these try to lose also hydrogen is part of it After that, we have halogens, which is basically, um, they're also, like, reactive because they're in, like, their seventh valence electron, and you need eight valence electrons to remain completely um, stable. And these guys, they're, like, one valence electron closer towards being, like, stable. So these guys are also highly reactive so that they can uh, be a stable atom. Halogens are way more reactive compared to these reactive non-metals, and in the other sense, these alkali metals are way more reactive than these alkaline earth metals. And then lastly, we have noble gases. So noble gases is ba so we call them noble because like they want basically, they have all the valence electrons they need, and when they have like all the valence electrons they need, they try to stay like as independent and try not to like be part of other kinds of uh, ele elect elements as possible and the reason why is because like they already have like a full set and they're already stable and because they're already stable they're not reactive like at all and so they would rather just keep to themselves well basically the periodic table of elements is categorized into different groups that each contain similar properties on how they react to other elements and what their purpose is in our world as you can see, there are many groups classified in our periodic table, each having a special meaning in them. Alkali, alkaline earth metals, transition metals, lanthanides, actinides, post-transition metals, unknown metals, metalloids, um, reactive non-metals, halogens, and noble gases.